the lovely Lord. As we're about to embark on the last segment of this weekend of temperance, the last message technically in regards to temperance, Lord, I come before thee asking for supernatural power. And we come, Heavenly Father, in the precious, blessed, and holy, and sanctified name of Jesus. We're in your church, Lord. We're in your house. We are your people, and you are our God. And this is your truth. I pray, loving Lord, that every heart would be opened up at this time now, and that your sweet, holy angels would get everybody alert, so they may at least digest the truths what they're going to hear just now. Please, if the powers of darkness are lurking anywhere, I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. We only want holy angels and the Holy Ghost on this place because this place is holy ground. Loving Lord, let thy truth go forward and let someone cry out and say, okay, I yield, I yield to the temperance message. And when all is said and done, Lord, we just want to tell you that we love you. And we thank you for your mercies towards us. Because this is our prayer and our praise with divine thanks. In Jesus' name that everybody say. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Just like to say, I'm a postman. I delivered a letter last night. I delivered a letter this morning. Now I'm delivering the last letter this evening. And it's up to you to open it and read it and to digest it and accept it, or you can scribble it up and throw it away and be like Felix and say, oh, I'm not ready yet. How are you gonna treat God's truth? It's up to you. But you don't want to be a castaway. You don't want to be that. So let's find out how we cannot be a, a castaway. The Apostle Paul says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, <laughs> least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So he understands that even though he's preaching, and even though he's lifting up the truth in, as it is in the living God, he knows that every single day he has to stay faithful to the living God because he could end up like Balaam or like Judas who were so close to the Lord, but at the end they failed. Now, can you imagine many of us in the church hearing these precious truths and at the end we're lost? That's why, I, that's why I admonish every young man and woman who wants to preach the truth as it is in Jesus. Always preach your message like it could be your last message because very well it might not be your last message but the person who's listening to you, could it could be their last message. Revelation 19 verse 1 to 9 talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb and the Bible says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he have judged the great whore. Who is the great whore? Who is the great whore of Revelation? Amen, sister. The Catholic Church. Yeah which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and have avenged the blood of her servants at her hand. And again they said, hallelujah. Even in heaven we're going to be saying amen and hallelujah. Many, many of us might be quiet in church because we don't like the truth. But in heaven, mm. hey, we're saying amen and hallelujah. Yeah. No one's going to be upset when they get to heaven about hearing truth yeah. from the living God. So you better get used to hearing truth down here. And straight as well, because I'm sure there's some preachers coming out now. They're not going around too much corners no more. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen and Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne 
What? A voice came out of the throne? I've always loved to coin this as the song of God the Father. God the Father is going to sing to you and I that we need to praise the living God because whenever God the Father speaks, it's like music. And it says, and a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, ye that fear him, both small and great. You think I'm going to keep silent by grace when I get to heaven? If God the Father tells me I must lift up Jesus and lift up his truth and lift up his holy name, hear what they say in heaven. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as a voice of many waters, and a voice of mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife have made herself ready. The wife have made herself ready. Oh. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, write it. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper. When is the marriage supper? That's the guests. <coughs> so who's the wife? Church. Church. And he said unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper yeah. of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. I want to be part of that marriage supper or I want to be part of that or part of his wife. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make no it doesn't make a difference to me. Mm. But as long as I'm there, <laughs> bless the Lord. Mm. So alright then. We don't want to be a castaway. We want to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. The quest, first question one needs to ask, and I know it's simple, what is sin? First John 3, 4, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. L-A-W, the Ten Commandments. Did we know that there's two types of sin? There's commission and there is omission. What are you talking about? What is the difference? One is we commit, the other is, is we omit. Commission is when you do something what God says don't do. Omission is saying, is doing something what God says don't do. So God says that thou shalt not commit adultery, but also, God says, remember to keep the Sabbath, and you don't keep the Sabbath. You say, no, I don't even need to keep the Sabbath. I want to stay in bed. <laughs> Did we know that there's four levels of sin? There's transgression, there's sin, and there's iniquity, and there is abomination. Do you know there's a difference? Well, transgression is when you don't even know. Sin is when you know, and you say, Lord, I didn't even mean it. <laughs> Iniquity is when you know, you make up your mind, you're going to do it, you don't care if you do good enough, you're going to do it. Abomination. Abomination is technically something which is so disgusting in the eyes of God. The Jews took one word which meant a whole heap of words. And abomination technically is like you getting a dustbin and you put in vomit in there and you put in intestines in there from an animal in, and you put in all filth in there and you close the lid and you keep it there for about a month. And then when you come back, you open up the lid and you go... It's an abomination. Did we know that there's a letter and a spirit in regards to the law? What do you mean? There's two sides. Let's look at adultery. The letter, thou shalt not commit adultery physically. So technically, we must not physically commit adultery with a woman. I must not physically commit adultery with a woman. But, Jesus says, Thou shalt not commit adultery spiritually, in other words, in our heart, by looking and lusting after the opposite sex. Mm. Thou shalt not commit adultery spiritually in your heart. Now, both of them is a sin, mm. just to let you know this. Mm. But when I say this, then you don't understand how serious the two are. Yeah. If I saw a lovely lady down the street, and she's mincing and she's walking and she's twisting up all the bones what God has given her. <laughs> and I look at her. And I just look and I say, okay. Mm. Have I sinned? Yes. yes. If my wife was with me, could she say, hey, <laughs> what are you looking at? Yes. I'm going to divorce you, you sin. Yes. Did my wife have a right to divorce me? Yes. 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 No. 
All I'm gonna get is a clip around the ear old. I said, listen, behave yourself, because you know, men, we got uh, we got tunnel vision, women have panoramic vision. A woman can look straight there, but she can see you at the side there. <laughs> we men, we can't do that, we have to turn. <laughs> it's the way our eyes are. <laughs> But imagine now I saw that girl and I say, you know what, we look all right. Wait till we see you again. <laughs> and then when I see her, she see me and she recognizes she see me from the other day and I recognize and I see her and I stop, talk, chat. We exchange numbers and before you know it, without my wife knowing, I'm going to meet her secretly. Elder, I'm going to meet her in quiet and drink a little mint tea with her. <laughs> and then you know what? We eat some food and they get intoxicated in my system. <laughs> and before you know it, I'm just like the day I'm born, naked. Does my wife have a right to divorce me? Yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes she does. There is a letter and there is a spirit. With a letter, you better not. With a spirit, you don't sin to you. You sin, you sin, but you sin against God by lusting after the woman in your heart. But it does not matter what sin it is. All sin is sin. You understand? Because many of us have computers and we don't physically touch the woman on the screen, but we can look at her. If we confess our sins, 1 John 1 9, look what the Bible says, 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you know what? He is, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to first forgive. And then you know what my God wants to do? Because all of us concentrate just on forgiveness. But my God wants to do more than that. He wants to cleanse you. He wants you to get to the point, young men or women, if you're struggling with the internet, he will forgive you, but he wants to cleanse you from that desire to want to go on the internet. Question, when we sin and we ask for forgiveness, where does our sin go? Okay, Lord, I've sinned, I've done a plan to. Where does your sin go? Amen, sister. Great controls at page 420. Important truth concerning atonement were taught the people by this yearly service. In the sin offerings presented during the year, a substitute had been accepted in the sinner's stead. But the blood of the victim had not made full atonement for the sin. It had only provided a means by which the sin was transferred to the sanctuary. So in other words, when I sin, when I sin, Lord, I'm forgive me. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to make a provision that you don't die for that sin. I'm going to get that sin placed upon the lamb where you're going to kill. And Jesus is our lamb of God. Yes. Amen. And then with that lamb, blood is going to be taken into the earthly sanctuary. But you know, Jesus was taken. He went up into our heavenly sanctuary. And now Jesus took our sins upon himself. So we don't pay the penalty. Jesus paid the penalty by going to the cross for us. But it had only provided a means by which the sin was transferred to the sanctuary. By the offering of blood, the sinner acknowledged the authority of the law, confessed the guilt of his transgression, and expressed his faith in him who was to take away the sin of the world. But he was not entirely released. Guess where the sin is? It's in the sanctuary. And guess what it's doing? God is waiting for you to get the victory over it. Because if you don't get the victory over it and you keep going in of it and out of it and in of it like a yo-yo, one day my God's going to say, I can't work with you no more. Keep it in. <laughs> yeah. You see, sin cannot be forgotten about. It's only transferred. Something or someone has to pay for sin. The law requires not just blood, but the life of the individual and its blood is transferred to the sanctuary. The Bible says in Proverbs 28 verse 30, he that covereth his sins, you're not gonna prosper. But whoso confesseth 
and forsake it. Then shall I have mercy. You gotta think, forsake your sins, brothers and sisters. And I'm talking to myself as well because this message is gonna offend me. I know I can feel it in my bones already, but you know what? It's gonna be good for us. God does not forgive unless we forsake. That sin is still against our names in the books in heaven and will stand against us in this day of investigative judgment going on now in heaven. So what is the purpose of the sanctuary, the judgment, and when did it start then? And the nations are angry, Revelation chapter 11, verse 18 and 19, and the nations were angry, and the wrath has come, and a time of the dead that they should be judged. The time of the who? The dead. The dead. It's the time for the dead to be judged. Yes, sir. And give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. One. And to the saints. Two. And them that fear thy name. Three, small and great, and shall destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in where, church? And there was seen in his temple the ark <coughs> of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and a great hail. All great controversy at the time appointed for the judgment, the close of the 2300 days in 1844 began the work of investigating and blotting out of sins. All who have ever taken upon themselves the name of Christ must pass its searching scrutiny. Both the living and the dead are to be judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. If you've taken on the name of Christ, some people say only Seventh-day Adventists are going to be part of the antitypical day of atonement going on in heaven now. <laughs> as long as you've accepted Jesus, if you go to church on Sunday, you're part of the judgment. And it's the Ten Commandments what judge you. So in 1844, Jesus started the judgment in heaven and started removing the sins of the saints and blotting them out. And those who died before 1844, they're waiting for the first or the second resurrection. Don't play about with your salvation because there's many people who are in the grave tonight who wish they could be alive for one more Sabbath just so they can ask God to forgive them. I preached a message one time and it made me so scared if the dead could speak to us. Imagine someone from the dead could just come out of the grave for one day. What do you think they'd be doing? You think they'd be so interested in trying to get a job? You think they'd be interested because they want to get married? The most important thing they want to do, I got one day before me go back down here on the grave. I want to get right with God. Yeah. If the dead could only speak to if someone come put, if someone could come from the grave tonight, I'm sure they would tell you, listen, whatever this man is saying, you better believe it, live up to it, because your days are numbered. Who are the first to be judged? And the nations were angry, and the wrath is come at the time of the dead that they should be judged. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name. The first people that are judged are the righteous dead, or the so called professors of godliness. They are the first to be judged. So the judgment starts with the righteous dead who have all died professing to be a child of God from Adam right down to someone who may die today. And then he will move automatically on the righteous living. Imagine being alive and your name is called in heaven. And while someone is preaching, you just can't wait for them to come off the platform because what they're preaching is going against your lifestyle. Listen, we as God's people need to get past the point of just needing forgiveness of sin. It's the eternal cleansing we need to be craving for. Our prayers need to change. Every minute we're asking God, oh Lord, forgive me of my sin. It's the same sin. You know what we need, brothers and sisters? We need a cleansing. We need to ask the Lord, Lord, you see this problem I've got? You've got to get it out of me because this one problem if you don't get it out of me, it's going to kill me. 
And every one of us know what problems we have. Aye. Cleanse? What does cleanse mean in a dictionary's definition? To remove dirt or filth, to remove guilt from or cure. Absolve, clean, clear, purge, purify, rinse, scour up. Some of us need a scouring. Scrub. Wash. This planet is not looked at the same way since October 22nd, 1844. No, no. No, no. We looked at different now since 1844. We are living in borrow, not on, in borrow time. And Satan knows it as well from Revelation chapter 12. Reading verse 12. He knows he's got a short time. And you know who's keeping Satan alive? You and I. Because we're supposed to be finishing the work. And since 1844, Jesus has been cleansing the sanctuary in heaven and six generations have passed and we are in the midst of the seventh. What? What are you talking about, preacher? Well, they say a generation is between 25 to 30 years. So on average, 25 years is one generation because people usually start having children during those years. So, so 225 is 50 years. That's two generations. That would take us to 1894. And then we take another two generations, 50 years, that would take us to the fourth generation, 1944. And then take another two generations, 50 years, that would take us to the sixth generation, that's 1994. And then so another 25 years is the seventh generation, that would take us to 2019. You are in the midst of the seventh generation since Jesus moved into the heavenly sanctuary. And I know many of us, all we're looking to do is just get married and have children and grow up and grow old and drop dead. It's bigger than that. With all my heart, I believe this is a generation that is willing to complete their atonement. What do you mean, preacher? And cooperate with Jesus in cleansing up the sanctuary in heaven and reach perfection. Hey, if you don't believe it, I do. I believe that we can reach perfection if we want it. And it starts with your diet. And Satan knows it as well. And the question what needs to be asked is, do we want to participate and cooperate with Jesus in the cleansing of the sanctuary? We didn't cooperate. What do you mean? Why do we have to cooperate? Did you know that there are things we can do on earth that will help our atonement to be achieved in the, in the sanct heavenly sanctuary? I call them sanctuary benefits. Oh, I love this part. I was looking at it during the week and I said, you know what? I just thank Jesus for the, little, for the Bible, what he's given us. There are, there are just a few I have found, but I'm sure there is more. Sanctuary benefits of Psalms 56, verse 8, Psalm, uh, Psalms 8, 7, 4, and 6, Malachi 3, 16, and 17, James 5, 19, and 20, and 1 Peter 4, verse 8. What are these texts all about? Well, let's look at the first one. Psalms 56, reading verse 8. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears in thy bottles. Are they not in thy book? What? What are you talking about? Every time you shed a tear because you're going through a trial and a tribulation through Satan's manifold problems. Let me tell you something. My God puts your tears in a bottle and they're written in the book. So when you're having a little trials, you remember at this time you were getting so stressed, you were crying about it, and I'm going to be merciful unto you. Psalms 87, we verse 4 and 6, I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia and Tyre and Ethiopia. This man was born there. Why Ethiopia and Tyre and Philistia? Because you know what? There was Gentile places and hardly the, vo the word of God is being preached there. But there are some people who knew God in an environment which was godless. And God says, and of Zion, it shall be said, this and that man was born in her. And the highest himself shall establish her. The Lord shall count when he writeth up the people that this man was born there. Hold on now. You mean to tell me, Lord, that you're going to take into consideration that I wasn't born as an Adventist and I kind of messed up a little bit in my teenage years and then when I turned 20, you grabbed me and you started to use me. You're telling me you're going to look at those first 20 years and say, you know what? You didn't have no other way of knowing about me, but now you know me, you accepted me, and I'm going to make sure I put a little mark of being merciful to you during those years. Amen. So some of you might be saying, Lord, 
My upbringing was so rough and I didn't get the best start in life. God says, I know, because I was there with you. Malachi 3, 16 and 17, oh, I like this one. Then they that fear the Lord spake up to one another, and the Lord hearkened, and he heard it. <laughs> and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the Lord, and that thought upon his name, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spear them as a man spear his own son <laughs> that serveth him. Let me tell you something. You see, many of you have said, you know what? I'm going to spend all this weekend listening to this health message. My God, is you know what my God? God's going to do? He's going to write it in a book of remembrance. And he's going to say, you know what? There's some people who are supposed to be here. They don't want to be here because they don't want to hear the message about meat. <laughs> but those that want to come and hear the message, I'm going to give you an extra blessing. Amen. And there's a book of remembrance written right next to God. And when he looks at you, remember, you did this and you said that and you helped this person, you encouraged this person. Well done, my son. That's a little extra tick against your name. Sanctuary benefits. Is there any more? Oh, yes, sir. James chapter 5, reading verse 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, what? Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide. You know, hold on now. So you're telling me, Lord, when I go and win someone to Jesus and I'm being used as a vessel to help somebody get to know God, there's certain things I've done in my life and my God's going to say, you know what? Since you've done those things, but since you've done that, I'm going to hide this. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's, that's, that's not just nice, that's precious. Because many of us have some sins we don't want no one else to know about. And we hide them. Well, God's going to hide it as well as long as you allow him to, be, to use you as a vessel. First Peter 4, 8. And above all things, have fervent charity. What's charity? Love, Love among yourselves. For charity shall do what? A multitude of sins. So you know what? Just learn to love brothers and sisters and stop walking up and down in church with your face upset. Just learn to show love between one another and you know what my God's going to do? He'll cover. I need covering. I don't know about you. I need a whole heap of covering. It's called sanctuary benefits. So oh, praise the Lord. Listen, listen, listen. Since 1844, Jesus has been cleansing the heavenly sanctuary of our sin because it is us who defile the sanctuary. So to cleanse the sanctuary, he needs to first cleanse us because it's us who defile the sanctuary with our sins. It's us. It's you and I. Every night we go on our knees when we pray to him, Lord, I pray you forgive me. It's transferred to the sanctuary. Because if you have to bear your sins, that means you're going to die for that sin. Yeah. But since we don't have to bear it, Jesus is okay. I will take it up into the sanctuary. Because I love you so much, my son and my daughter. And the sin of Judah, listen, the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with a point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altar. That's the whole on. It's graven on the table of your heart and on the altar. Hold on. It's on your heart. And your altar, sin is registered in two places. It's registered in your brain, and it's registered in the <coughs> heavenly sanctuary. That's why God has to cleanse you of sin. Yeah. Guess what your brain has? Conscience. No, it's got a memory, brother. Amen. Amen. That too. Amen. That too, he's got a memory. Yeah. And you know what you can do with your memory? Yeah. You can go back and relive that sin. Yeah. So you know what God has to do? He has to do more than just forgive you of that sin. He has to cleanse you of wanting to do that sin. And then the third thing, he has to cleanse your memory. Yeah. But you know what we do? We've got to run back into that sin or we download new information. 
And then now God has got a bigger job to do now because he has to clean out that sin, what he just downloaded. So how do we download sin, sir? Well, you can download it through music. Is there ever a time when you listen to music, miss listen to music, listen to music, then you haven't listened to it for about 10, 15 years, and then you go into a shop, and then the shop is playing that music, and the whole song come back in your head again? Yeah, you know why? It's in your memory. Yeah. When you're watching television, and you're watching dirt, Watching my own. <coughs> one time I was watching, I think I must have told you. I think I was, no, I haven't told you. I was watching television one time, I was watching the news, and I was flicking over because I wanted to go somewhere. And then guess what I find? I find, I think it was EastEnders. And when I was flicking by, I see two men in a bed talking together like husband and wife. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's kissing as well. Yeah. And you know what he was talking about? How much I love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He means so much to me. Yeah, yeah. And guess what they wanted to do after that? Yeah. Them start leaning neck over to kiss each other. Men put the feet back. <laughs> I don't want that thing downloading my mind too when I kiss up. As soon as I see the man start leaning, get my remote control. <laughs> I said, who me? You think I'm gonna download that information in my brain? No, sir. And so you sit down and call that information, I call that entertainment, and say, oh, look at the two of my kids up them bad. You're too bad. <laughs> too bad? <laughs> and some of you don't even miss yeah. an episode. <laughs> some of you have Sky Plus and you tape it. I am Sky. You see why God can't come for us yet? Yes. And we're in church, 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 and we're in church. And the most important thing that my God wants to do, he wants to cleanse the heavenly sanctuary. But for him to cleanse the heavenly sanctuary, he has to cleanse, up, cleanse our brain. And for him to cleanse our brain, he has to do three things. Yeah. He has to get us to the point where we ask for forgiveness of some of our sin, and we don't even think it's sin. <laughs> Second, he has to get at sin out of our lives so we don't even want to do it no more. Right. And then once we, once he gets that sin out of our life, he has to cleanse our memory so we don't even have a recording of it no more in our brain. And God is in heaven every single day and that is all he is doing for his church. Yeah. And then when we have a health mess, we get upset. Yeah. Because all God wants to do is bring us up to higher ground. Do you know how it feels like to live with holy angels? Do you know how it feels like to live with angels that have never sinned? Do you know how it feels like to sit down with the angels who veil their faces and sit down roar in the presence of the living God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Ghost? We don't even know. Some of us come into church, we dress anyhow, we talk anyhow, we do anything we want. Let me tell you something. God is holy. And that's why I want to actually place so much emphasis. Be careful what you do, husband and wife, on Friday night. Because even though, yes, you do have a right to come together, but when it comes to God, this is holy ground. Pick up the shoes, Moses. Because the place where thou standest is holy ground. Amen. Accountability and influence. What are you talking about, sir? Well... That's why God can't deal with the sins of the lost and the ungodly after the thousand years. Why? 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 Because if a lady dresses in a certain way, and I'm not picking on you ladies, I love you ladies, but it's just to make a, a point across. If a lady dresses in a certain way and causes 500 men throughout the day to sin, then she was accountable for dressing that way, which caused them to lust after her. So she was accountable 500 times for causing those men to, to lust. So if those men have sinned, she sinned too. Not only that, but if a parent wrongly trains a child up to be a thief, then the child is not just guilty, but also the parent is guilty for influencing and training the child to be a thief. That's why Sister White said, anybody who eats meat and doesn't live up to the health message, they shouldn't even be, even be preaching.